Musa alayhi salam was living with his companions and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him and informs him one day because Musa alayhi salam had a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa alayhi salam in a way that is befitting of him. He informed Musa alayhi salam that two people in his ummah, in his community had passed away. Two people had passed away and that one of them had gone to heaven and that the other had gone to hell. So Musa alayhi salam, he knew that these two people had passed away in his community and he knew that one of the people that had passed away was the worst of people in the community. The worst of people. He was the town drunkard. He was used his time being drunk. And then he knew that the other person who had passed away was the best of people. He was an abid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, someone who spent his days and nights praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Musa alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Ya Allah, show me the fate of the one who is in Jannah. Show me the fate of the one who is in Jannah. And to Musa alayhi salam's surprise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him that it was the town drunkard that was in heaven. It was the town drunkard that was in heaven. So Musa alayhi salam was completely confused. He didn't understand. Why is the town drunkard the one in heaven? What is going on here? So Musa alayhi salam decides to investigate. And he goes to the house of the widow, of the abid, of the pious person, of the worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he knocks on her door. And she answers and he asks her. And he says to her, Your husband was known to be the best amongst us. To be one of the best amongst us. One of the best in my community. How come... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me something different about his fate. How come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me something different about his ending? And his wife, the Abid's wife, told him, told Musa alayhi salam, my husband used to pray all day and all night. Every act of obedience that you can think of, he used to do it. But there was always one thing that he did that didn't sit right in my heart. It confused me. And that one thing was, you know when people say, when they do worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they say, Ya Allah, please accept my prayers. Ya Allah, I need you to answer my prayers. Ya Allah, accept my prayers, accept my prayers. He used to never make that dua. And it would always confuse me. He used to never say, Ya Allah, accept my prayers. And so Musa alayhi salam got it. He started to understand. Mm, this man used to think that he didn't need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept his prayers. That just the fact he was worshipping and just the fact he was an abid, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was already going to forgive him and give him everything that he wanted. It was a form of arrogance. He was taking it for granted. I got this. So Musa alayhi salam left. And then he went to the widow of the town drunkard. And he knocked on her door. And he said to her, your husband was known to be the town drunkard. But I have good news for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven all of his sins. And not only that, has elevated his rank. And he is now in Jannah. What is it that your husband did that changed his fate like this? What is it that your husband did that he is in a, different, in a good fate? And so she said to Musa alayhi salam, this man used to spend all his time in the alcohol house where they would serve alcohol. He would always be in that house, in that part of town, doing only Allah knows what he was doing. But every night he would come home and collapse on the floor and moan throughout the night, Ya Allah, forgive me. Ya Allah, forgive me. Ya Allah, I can't stop. Ya Allah, I'm weak. Ya Allah, if you don't forgive me, who's going to forgive me? If you don't give me mercy, who's going to forgive me? Because of this act of turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite his major sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. SubhanAllah. It has to be noted that in the first story, we have to realize and understand that a lot of people like to run with this narration and say, you know what, I'm one of those sinners. 
In the first story, it was the drunkard. He was drunk, 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 and he would always come back home and complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him to forgive him, and he was forgiven. So a lot of people like to take this story and say, you know what, I'm that guy. Right? I, I do this sin, I do that sin, but you know what, it's okay because Allah is going to forgive me. No, that's not the mindset we can have. That's so we can't play tricks with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, we have to have an idea and a, and a good opinion, husnul dhan billah, a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That no matter how many times we fail, the door is always going to be open for us. So that's something to note. But what is the moral of these two stories? The moral of these two stories, brothers and sisters, is that kibr, arrogance, is a terrible thing that can destroy you. The first person, the first abid, he had kibr, he had arrogance. He believed that, you know what, he didn't have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept his prayers. Why should he? He's the one standing all night worshipping Allah. He's the one praying all night worshipping Allah. Allah should accept, should accept his good deeds. He doesn't need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept them.